So far, and I'll knock on wood here, there have been no allegations of flying funny business or padded expense accounts from one of Lukasik's rivals, and that's Rick McIver, who's been on this show a few times to tell us about his boring expense claims. And Rick, you're back again, and I know you're going to say, nothing to see here, boring expense claims. But let still me start. Boring, still still boring? boring, David. Okay, good, there we go. But let me ask you about this, again. Uh, Lukasik's reactions last night, I was watching them online and, uh, and in some uh, news outlets, and one of the things he was doing was complaining about, quote unquote, sleazy politics, that this information about his daughter's flights was coming in the form of brown envelopes slipped to reporters and muttering darkly about who might benefit from me. So let me ask you straight up, Rick, was this information leaked by your campaign to discredit his? No, sir. If not yours, might it have been Prentice's, do you think? You can make all the speculation you want. I'll only talk about my own behavior, and, and uh, I, I'm not part of this. And, uh, and, and frankly, you know what? Politics is pretty rough and tumble. I don't think anybody doubts that. Um, there's no excuse, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for bad behavior when it comes to uh, hopefully no one used their uh, privileged position to get information. But uh, you know what? I just, all I know is the Taxpayers Federation came out this week and said they didn't have a concern with my expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I was part of cleaning up the Sky Palace thing that happened when I was there. Uh, I think Albertans are looking for someone that has a, a tr good track record in the past. Uh, if they're looking for someone to uh, lead us into uh, clear, clear fields in the future. And uh, in this, can in this uh, contest, I, I seem to be that person. You, you may be doing this already as you try and drum up support for your candidacy here, but let me ask you as well, uh, would you say at this point, uh, it's time, Tom Lukasik, to step down from this race, it's time for it just to be a race between me and that guy, Prentice, make it a two-man show off. Is, 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 uh, are you ready to say that? No, I'm ready to say Albertans need to make the, make the choice. Uh, I believe that uh, Alberta Burtons uh, are well able to do that. And uh, I'm just pointing out to them that I'm the one that's uh, fiscally conservative, that has a pledge to the taxpayers, that has said that uh, I will insist that senior members of my campaign team and companies they own will be ineligible for government contracts, something else, something no one else has said. Mm -hmm. I've said on day one of the campaign this is about trust. And I say in, uh, near the end of the campaign that's more apparent now than ever that that, uh, that is the case. And, and when it comes trust, the evidence seems to stack up in my favor. So I'm asking uh, Albertans respectfully to uh, give me the reins and we will uh, drive the wagon in the right direction for them. And you may have heard me talk about, uh, with Rick Orman just a minute ago before he came on, about uh, the perceived culture that, the, that some voters say uh, the PCs have. And it's not a good culture, a culture of entitlement. You were relatively late to provincial politics. Of course, you spent a lot of time on Calgary City Council just in for the first time in the last election. So you're a little late to this sort of PC culture, but is that what you can bring to say, yes, the culture has to change, that you have, yeah. well, we're going to have to have cabinet audits, and you're the guy to do that? Uh, it is what I'm saying, and, and the, evidence, the evidence is mounting. Again, the, the Taxpayers Federation looked at everybody. I'm the only one that they come up without a complaint on. Uh, I'm the one with actually a track record of fixing things. Uh, I'm looking and talking about the Sky Palace while I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the ministries that I was uh, in charge of, uh, you know, were out of trouble, uh, if not completely, no for the vast, vast majority. So, you know what, and I've had accomplishments on behalf of the taxpayers in terms of uh, negotiations with First Nations, several that, that, that bode well for our ability to get pipelines built. Uh, you know, a uh, 60-year negotiation with the Sutina, a 30-year negotiation with the Stony uh, Indian Nation, the 20-year uh, uh, negotiation with uh, on Highway 43. Uh, these are the things that Albertans are going to need to have a bright future for their kids and grandkids. Uh, these are the things that they're going to need to be able to trust their government going forward. And, uh, and frankly, I've come about this, I'm the ordinary guy that's come up the journeyman route as a member of city council, uh, been on the police commission, chaired the housing company, uh, on the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association board, working with 350 municipalities, large and small, for years. Uh, I've, I've kind of done my groundwork. Uh, I'm ready to lead, sir. Um, just quickly, Rick, uh, is this the vote this weekend or is it going to be two ballots? Uh, you know what, if I could predict the future better, David, <laughs> I'd be a lot wealthier than I am right now. Uh, uh, right. I, don't, I don't know what Albertans are going to do. Uh, I've, I've asked them for their support and, and judgment days this weekend. All right, well, we'll see you up north, uh, Alberta-wise, north from where you are in Calgary. Rick McIver, good luck in the last few days of the race. Thanks so much. Thanks, David. It's great to be here. Uh